I hear the Holy Spirit say, lay down on the bed. Well, we got furniture showroom. You know, it's a furniture store. We got a bed. And uh, so I'm like, uh, okay. So I test the spirits, and it's him. And I'm like, uh, why do you want me to lay down? And he says, you either lay down or I'm going to knock you down. Oh, okay. So I lay down, and it's him, and I'm praying. I got my eyes closed. And... Uh, I hear all these little voices, some close up, some far away, saying, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. And they're, they're hushed, they're excited, they're not fearful, but they're, they're buzzing. And I'm like, uh, who's coming? He's coming, he's coming. Now, I understand how Paul says, in the spirit or in the flesh, I don't know. Because all of a sudden, I'm not on the bed. I'm somewhere solid, absolutely real, not heaven, on my knees, face down, hands out in front of me, kneeling, balled up, as small as I can ball up. And everything is black, and I got my eyes pinched shut, way, way off in the distance, there's a little perfect, pure white light that's getting closer, and it's Jesus. And however much I thought it was a good idea before... Now I'm really regretting that I asked for it. And I'm, I'm, I'm completely aware of my blackness and his whiteness, of, of his holiness. Now, I, I, I'm doing pretty well with the Lord at that point. I'm repented up. I, I'm, I'm not in any willful sin. Porn is way long time before. You know, I'm not perfect, but I'm on short accounts with him, and I think I'm pretty clean. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Uh, I am acutely aware. There, there's no, there's no sense of, of, of judgment, like he's going to condemn me or he's going to. He's going to accuse me of stuff I didn't do, or, or I'm going to go to hell if he gets closer, or he's not going to like me. Or, there's nothing like that. My only thought is, I'm deathly afraid that some part of my blackness might stick to his whiteness and defile him. That's it. There's nothing else. There's, there's, no, there's no awareness of what's right or fair or just or anything. I am completely aware at that moment that I deserve the worst and that he is perfect and I don't want any of me I don't want him to get any closer for fear that I might taint his holiness and that light keeps getting closer and closer and I'm seeing it out the top of my head it's so bright and I got my head down at my hands down on the ground and I'm balled up as tight as I can and I'm like please go away please I'm so sorry it was a bad idea I should have never asked please just go away just go away don't get any closer and the light keeps getting brighter and brighter and brighter and I don't know how long it took I don't like telling this story because it's so holy and people mock it or twist it or something and I just fear for them better not better not to have the ammunition but the Lord says okay so 
He gets closer and closer and closer and closer, and I can feel him standing. I can see his feet through my head, right just inches standing ahead of me. And he's standing up, and I'm balled up and down on the ground. And I'm begging for him to go away. And he says, put your hands on my feet. Oh, no, no, sir. No, I'm not touching you. I'm scared to death of getting anything of me on you. I don't want to do any such thing. I don't. Please don't make me. Please don't make me. And he says, do it in a real firm, like, I'm not mad at you, but you're going to do what I tell you to do. I slide my hands up and I can feel his feet. And my eyes are shut as hard as I can shut them. And I can see his feet. I can feel the hairs on his feet. And all I can tell you is that he's more real than you are. This whole thing we think is reality is a purple crayon on the back of a bar napkin. This is some crusty old black and white cinema scope celluloid thing from I don't know 1930s. This is this is nothing compared to what's really real. The colors and the smells and the flavors and the and all of it. I've never done a drug in my life. I've never pick one. Mushrooms, marijuana, anything. Nothing, nothing ever. I've never been drunk. I've never been on any depressants or any psychotics or anything except the hay fever medicine. <sighs> this was not a product of my imagination. This was not a dream. It was not a vision. I was wide awake. And it was more real than this is. And I have my feet, my hands on his feet, and I'm crying. He says, put your thumbs in the hole. And there's a hole in his ankle, and I don't want to. I don't want Oh, Lord, I don't want to. He says, do it. And I roll my hand up, and I'm crying, and I'm crying, and I feel the hole in his ankle. And he says, stand up. I don't want to. Lord, I don't want to. And he's being real patient. And he bends over, grabs me by the armpit, and stands me up. And I still got my head. I'm trying to suck my head into my body like a turtle. Eyes closed as tight as I possibly can, and I'm still seeing him out the top of my head. He's so bright. We're in a white robe. And he takes my, my hand, and he sticks it in a fold in the robe and puts it on the scar in his side. And I feel the skin and the hair and the scar, the hole in crying and crying and crying I had prayed for for a lot a lot at that point fasted without food and water a lot probably 200 days out of that year before that to see through the eyes of Jesus to have wisdom to help bear his burden to be used however he wanted to give up whatever he asked of me for wisdom and I'm standing there crying he holds his hands out says hold my hands and I don't want to he grabs my hands puts my hands in his and says feel the hole and I slide my hand up his arm and feel the hole in his wrist my thumb in the hole and I'm crying and crying and crying 
and all the while just just asking him to go and, and saying I'm sorry for ever asking and uh he takes my hand and puts it on the side of his face and I can feel beard hairs and skin and everything more real than you are and he's standing you know that far away to where it's I'm not reaching way out I'm just I'm, I've got my hand against his face and he says don't be afraid in a way that lets you know that he's about to do something that will terrify you <laughs> and and you will instantly be afraid and you have every right to be afraid and he's telling you not to because whatever he's about to do is going to make you afraid <laughs> so it just makes me more afraid but I want to be obedient so I'm trying to just stand there and wait and see what he's going to do and he takes a step toward me okay now you know he's in my buffer zone now you're getting a little close he says don't be afraid which of course makes me more afraid <laughs> or at least I think you know I should be way way more afraid And he takes another step toward me like he's going to headbutt me or kiss me straight on. And says, don't be afraid. And I feel, I hear my heart racing, pounding, 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 pounding. And he leads in. And right when I feel like he's going to headbutt me, his head goes into my head and I hear his heartbeat no problem boom boom at mine and he takes another step and steps in and I'm standing there I hear the heartbeats I hear my heartbeat slow down to his and I know everything and I am in the mind of Christ and I see the whole panorama of creation as if it's all done and there's a new heaven and a new earth the judgments are over and it's perfect I can't tell you who got into heaven and who didn't can't tell you what the new Jerusalem looks like I can't tell you anything except all that I could contain at that moment was an awareness that it was all perfect that all of creation for eternity would sit with its mouth open marveling at how God tied it all up with a bow and everything was just there was nothing left out there was an explanation for everything and it made perfect sense and it had to be that way and it was fair and it was right and it was just and it was good every kid in Africa that died of AIDS every every person that was raped or molested or hurt or whatever somehow beyond my capacity to understand it was all part of the plan and it was all necessary and it was all tied up with a bow and justice was served on on those who did wrong and, and mercy on those who needed mercy and it was perfect perfect no no string un, untied no nothing left undone perfect 
and I couldn't process anything but that, and I stood there, and I marveled, and I cried. I said, oh, God, I had no idea. Everything is part of the plan. It's perfect. And I don't know if it was five minutes or ten minutes or half an hour. But I knew everything. Couldn't, couldn't retain it, couldn't process it, couldn't whatever. But I saw the end, and it was perfect. Perfectly just, perfectly righteous. Nobody could argue. Nobody could say I was done wrong and justice wasn't meted out or I shouldn't be here in the lake of fire or anything. Even people that were in heaven and didn't think they deserved it. The Lord would show them. They could, everybody could see the whole thing and everybody knew. All of creation knew and marveled at how good the Father is, how perfect His plans, how much He knew the end from the beginning, how every butterfly, every speck of dust, every little dog, every everything was part of the plan. And then I'm laying on the bed of the furniture store with, <laughs> you know it's the Holy Spirit when you don't even care how long the snot string is all the way to the ground. And I just lay there for I don't know how long, another hour, just trying to recover from it all and, and limp home. And, uh, knowing that I'll never be the same after that. Some people don't understand how I've endured everything I have because it's all part of the plan. How have you put up with some of the people you have to put up with? Because it's part of the plan. How do you have the faith month after month after month to not know how the bills are going to get paid because God's on the throne and it's all part of the plan. I don't know. I don't think I'm special. Like God did that for me and he doesn't do it for anybody else. I know lots of people we got several here that Jesus showed up and gave him a hug or something. He's real. When somebody, some atheist argues with me, their opinion that God's not real. I don't argue my opinion that God is real. I met Jesus in person and he's more real than you are he is exactly who he said he was and is and will be and I don't serve him for the hopes of going to heaven I serve him because he's a righteous God that deserves to be served no matter what happens to me I don't preach a lot about heaven and hell because I think it's humanism I think it's hedonism to serve him for a reward or to serve him to avoid punishment. I serve him because he's worthy to be served no matter what happens to me. I pray in the name of Jesus. 
and everybody that sees this video that somehow some way he would show up in your life and show you how real he is that he would give you an understanding an eyewitness testimony of how loving and true and righteous and holy he is how much he loves you how much he died for you took your sins to hell punched your bus ticket Thanks for listening. It's just one of a lot of stories. A lot of stories I don't tell. But heaven's real. And Jesus is real. And God is real. And time is running out. And you need to get real. Say you're sorry for your selfishness and hypocrisy and fleshiness and chasing the things of this world instead of obeying God. If you need help finding Jesus, go to our website, email, give us a call. Phone numbers are there. Fellowshipofthemartyrs.com.